shouldn't be any Senate business uh, while the government is shut down, even though in previous government shutdowns, the Senate was quite busy um, doing nominations, passing legislation, and the rest. Uh, but I gather we're going to discover today there's an exception to that. If it's okay to do uh, business if you're dealing with a Trump administration regulation, but it's not okay to do business to pass two overwhelmingly supported Israel bills and a Jordan a bill and a Syria bill, the package that we've been trying to get to now through uh, three different uh, votes uh, to get on the bill to go forward. Uh, clearly, the Democrats' priorities are way out of whack here, way out of whack. Uh, you see that also related to border security, things that they all supported in the past, every prominent Democrat uh, they now uh, oppose. So I would say this is a little bit of a, uh, a challenging beginning uh, to the new year, but we'll work our way through it. Well, on the uh, issue of the government shutdown, the one thing that we all know is that the Democrats used to be for homeland or border security. They used to be concerned about uh, defending and protecting America's borders. And the uh, evidence is pretty clear of that. They've got long records that show that, going back to 2006, where every Democrat voted for a 700-mile fence, including, at that time, then-Senators Obama, then-Senators Clinton, and then-Senator Biden. And then you also uh, had, in 2013, uh, every Democrat vote to complete a 700-mile fence and support uh, $46 billion in border security funding, $8 billion of which was specifically to be for a barrier. And then as recently as last year, um, I think all but three Democrats, 46 out of 49, uh, voted once again for $25 billion for border security. And so the question is, why have they all of a sudden uh, flip-flopped uh, on this issue? And the answer is pretty clear. It's because uh, this is now an idea that comes from President Trump, and the Democrats clearly don't want to give the president uh, a victory on this issue. Now, they've argued that, uh, you know, we ought to be, you know, voting on these uh, things on the floor, as the leader has pointed out, until we have something that actually can pass and that the president will sign into law. It seems like um, all the uh, shenanigans the Democrats are, are, are trying to pull are, are simply that. And if you look back at what was said um, not that long ago, Chuck Schumer said in December that in order to bring up a bill on the floor and have it voted on, it needed to be one that the president had publicly committed to support and that there were 60 votes in the Senate for. And he said that we shouldn't have a vote until all four leaders in the House and the Senate uh, had uh, agreed. There shouldn't be a vote on any uh, legislative proposal uh, in either chamber until that happens. And so we agree with that. We think that it's important for the Democrats and for the president to sit down and negotiate a compromise, uh, come together, uh, get the government funded and open again and uh, address which is a, what, something that is a huge priority for our country, and that's the security at our border. Well, we're now in the fourth week of a uh, shutdown of a portion of our government. The issue is border security. Uh, if the southern border were a patient in the hospital, that patient would be in need of critical care treatment, and yet the Democrats would be refusing to allow treatment to take place. Uh, the long history of this being a crisis at the border is known. President Obama called it a crisis, and that was fine. But when President Trump calls it a crisis, he is ridiculed by the Democrats. We know that barriers work. We have over 300 miles of barriers already. We know in areas where there are barriers that, uh, that they've been very effective at stopping people from coming across the border at those areas. Those people look to other places to come across. So barriers are effective. But Nancy Pelosi calls a barrier immoral. Well, to me, what's immoral is not securing the southern border. It is not protecting the American people and keeping our border and our country secure. On that topic, the president, who is not well known for flexibility, has clearly been more flexible here than the other side. He's taken a campaign discussion about a wall along the border 
and continue to look for ways that you can secure the border in whatever way you need to secure the border. My colleagues have talked about how long this has been. The barrier part has been part of what we've done as a country. Uh, Bush 41, I think, built the first substantial barrier south of San Diego in 1992. Detentions went down 95 percent. President Clinton built a barrier at El Paso in the, in the mid-90s. Detentions went down 95 percent. President Bush 43 built a wall at Yuma. Uh, detentions went down 90 percent. When you've got a 90 and 95 percent solution where it makes sense, that's exactly the kind of solution that the American people would expect you to have. And let me say one at a time, nobody will have more credibility than the president if he is ever in a position where he can say the border is under a level of control that the American people should expect their government to provide. And when he says that, all the other discussions related to this will be much more easily solved. The, what are the real workforce needs of the country? What do you do with people who came or stayed illegally? The easiest issue of all to solve, what do you do with people who grew up here and haven't gotten into serious trouble? All that is easier to solve if the American people think that the government's done its legitimate uh, job, met its legitimate responsibility to secure the border. The president's trying to do that in the way that every president before him since the 1990s has tried to do it. It's time for the Democrats to be where they have been on this issue. Many of them in the, in the Congress since the 1990s have totally reversed their position. If 700 miles of wall is fine, 702 miles is not immoral. It's a ridiculous place to have that selective morality of just what you decide uh, is not moral because somebody else wants to do it. Thank you, folks. Thank you, Leader and, and Chairman. Uh, make no mistake about it, folks. There is a humanitarian crisis at our border. We have tens of thousands of people that come to our border every month. They are inadmissible. They are illegal immigrants. And it's not just about our southern border. It is about every community every town here in the United States. It is about human trafficking. It is about illegal weapon smuggling. And it is about illegal drugs. The majority of the methamphetamine that lands on our Iowa doorsteps and affects our Iowa families comes from our southern border. It comes through Mexico. We need to secure our border. There is no doubt about it. Now, what we have seen in recent weeks are the, the Democrats, and they are stopping any movement on the floor. They are trying to shut the Senate down. And we have a package in front of us that would reassure our allies in the Middle East. It is very important that we do that, and yet the Senate Democrats are refusing to move it. But alas, they have a bill that they would like to bring up. Um, I think that we have to get through this impasse, but it is time that the Democrats start working with us, not against us. And again, I want to reemphasize that we do have a crisis that we need to solve, and I, I urge the Democrats to come forward, help us solve this now. Thank you. As a United States Marine who spent several months during the Clinton years on our southern border, I'd say as a United States Senator, uh, I still maintain a deep conviction that we need to secure that border. Why? I think the President put it best. This is a humanitarian crisis. This is indeed a security crisis. And unfortunately, Democrats have, have turned this into a binary sort of moral issue. Just months ago, they supported securing our southern border. So look, we can open up the government. We should open up the government immediately. It's just going to require some compromise on the par part of the Democratic leadership working with this president. Leader McConnell. Leader McConnell. What would you tell a furloughed government worker in Kentucky that the United States Senate is doing to get them back to work and get paid? What I would tell them is that the solution to the problem is for the President of the United States, the only person of the 330 million or so of us who can sign something into law, reaches an agreement with the Democratic majority in the House 
and enough Democrats in the Senate <clears throat> to prevent an agreement. There's no a way around that. Having show votes in the Senate doesn't solve the problem. Can I, can I follow up on that? Because there's been a lot of ink spilled on the idea that the way around that would be if you were willing to do something that might o potentially eventually override a veto. Is that something you can categorically say that you would not do? In a situation like this, where the president, in my view, is in the right place, trying to get the right outcome, as all of us have expressed, with regard to border security, of course not. Yeah, sure. You and also Senator Ernst have condemned Representative King for his comments. And I'm wondering, why haven't you also condemned the president for the many insensitive comments, racially tinged comments that he has made? Look, it's been my practice for the last couple of years not to make sort of random observations about uh, the president's tweeting and other things. Uh, Senator uh, Congressman uh, King clearly uttered words that are unacceptable in America today. And I want to commend uh, Leader McCarthy and the House Republicans for the action that they took. I think it was entirely appropriate. Should he resign? Should he resign? How long do you think this shutdown will continue? And are you considering canceling next week's recess if the government is still shut down? Yeah, we certainly will not be in recess next week if the government is still shut down. Ed? Leader, to your point about Congressman King and Senator Ernst, to you as well, why now? This is somebody who has said things of this nature for several years. Well, it may surprise you. you know, I haven't been following every utterance of Congressman King, uh, but I certainly followed this one. And I think the House Republican uh, Conference did the right thing. Thank you. I, I would say that, um, yes, there have been comments in the past, and I have pushed back against those comments. Will not support them. I rebu rebuked him heavily um, with these latest, just absolutely disgusting comments. Um, those can't continue, and we cannot be a nation divided. We have got to come together. We cannot tolerate that type of rhetoric. We cannot. Should he resign? He, he is an elected representative from the 4th District, and I trust that the, the folks, the good folks from Iowa in the 4th District will make the correct choice moving forward. Make the correct choice to vote now.